I am about to show you some of the most insane brakes you have ever seen on an electric bike. The Blackbird comes standard with 203 millimeter rotors and four piston Tektro hydraulic brakes, which stop really nice and work extremely well. If you want a step above that, the Hydra comes with Magura four piston hydraulic brakes with Magura rotors. These are considered to be some of the best, if not the best brakes that exist for electric bicycles. But I am 99.9% .9 sure most of you have never seen what I have on the Warthog right there. They are even bigger. Before we get there, let's jump back to the beginning or back to the smaller size rotors that most electric bikes used to have. This is a 160 millimeter rotor. This particular one is made by Juintec. I have used this on my own personal bike with hydraulic brakes and they work actually really well. The Avenger bike, some of our other smaller folding bikes, still come with 160 millimeter rotors. And if you have a bike that's only going about 20 miles an hour, isn't super heavy, isn't super fast, then honestly, that's perfectly fine. If you want to upgrade, or if you have a slightly heavier bike, then it's a good idea to go with a 180 millimeter rotor. You can see the little stamp right there that says 180. More and more bikes are starting to come with these, but because the rotor itself is physically bigger in diameter, basically you're putting the caliper further away from the hub, and when that squeezes, you get a little bit more leverage, so in theory, more stopping power just by making the rotor bigger. And then when you get into heavier, faster bikes, sometimes it's a good idea to bump up to a 203. We do try and put these on some of our bikes, like the Blackbird I mentioned outside. The Hydra, for example, comes with 203 millimeter rotors. Bikes that have a little bit more power or are a little bit faster. But there's one more thing to discuss besides just diameter, which is the thickness. So this right here is a 180 millimeter rotor from Galfer, and if you look right in the corner there, it says it is two millimeters thick. Well, how thick is a normal rotor anyway? All three of these that I've showed you are 1.8 millimeters thick. That is the standard size. So would this 180 millimeter rotor work any better than this 180 millimeter rotor when they have basically the same leverage? And the answer is yes, actually, they would. If you're on a long downhill stretch and you're constantly on the brakes, the pads are on that rotor, they're generating friction, that's what's slowing you down, and it can generate a lot of heat. And the number one reason for brake fade when your brakes actually stop working is because they get too hot. So that's the reason we've started offering the Galfer rotors as an upgrade, specifically for e-bikes, because even though this might be sufficient on certain bike models, or even the 203 might be sufficient, Putting a little more mass on the rotor and actually having some better heat dissipation will give you better braking performance. And it also means that you don't need any adapters or anything if you want to upgrade your 180 millimeter rotors. It is, however, a recommended practice to replace your brake pads when you replace your rotors. And we are also stocking e-bike specific brake pads. Essentially what they are is a special compound that is designed to better deal with the heat and last longer. So again, if you're gonna swap the rotors out for the same size, I would recommend you replace the pads at a bare minimum, but if you upgrade to the e-bike specific pads, you're gonna get even better braking performance. And Galfer doesn't stop there. They also have a thicker 203 millimeter rotor. And don't get me wrong, this rotor right here performs really well, but I want you guys to know what is the next best option which is this. And you might be thinking, okay, that is a great upgrade option. Thicker rotor, bigger diameter, e-bike brake pads. That has to be a huge improvement, but I'm not done yet. 160, let's set these aside. 180, 203 millimeters. And I don't even know if you guys are ready for this. 246 millimeters. These are an absolute monster. Let me put this over the size of the other brake rotor so you can see how much bigger that is than even a 203. There we are compared to a 180, which is what a lot of you are gonna have. And then a 160, which is what used to come on most bikes. It is crazy. This is so big that it probably won't fit on a lot of bikes. So if you have any intention of thinking you're gonna buy these, 
make sure you measure your bike first. Check any specifications from the fork manufacturer of your bike. This thing is just astronomically huge. It may not clear the frame in some cases. It may rub on your fork. However, on the bikes it does work on, I wanted to see, is there anything such as complete overkill? Is there something as too much braking power? And remember how these are 1.8 millimeters, bump up to two millimeters. These ones measure on my calipers a whopping 2.3 millimeters thick. So because you have a larger rotor, you get that extra leverage. The rotor is way thicker than any of the other rotors we have here. So you have more mass to get rid of more heat. So these are gonna stay a lot cooler. And the other thing to think about is how much of that rotor is actually in contact with the pad at any given time. If you've got a smaller rotor like this, the pad is actually covering a bigger portion of the rotor. And so it's going to heat up quicker than something that's a little bit bigger. So the bigger you go, the less heat the pad can generate on the rotor just because of the sheer physical diameter of it. Now one of the concerns I had with something this big in addition to the fit is are they gonna be too grabby? There is this theory that I've heard, although I haven't experienced it yet myself, we're gonna find out, is that if you have too much braking power, that any time you squeeze the brakes, instead of having a controlled braking experience, the tires are just going to immediately lock up and you're gonna lose control. So we have on the MD750 Warthog here, these massive 246 millimeter rotors. We have the e-bike specific brake compound. We swapped those in while switching everything out. So we've got fresh pads just broken in. We've got the massive rotors, both front and rear. Thanks, Mark, for actually doing the work on that. And now it's time to take this bike on a trail. Okay, I've got the Warthog. This is the MD750. We're going this way. Apparently, Jerry Lee's never been this way on the trail. She's got the roll-off bike with the stock brakes. I've got the MD750 with the massive 246 millimeter rotors. So we're gonna ride them down this hill. I'm gonna feel the brakes out. Then at some point, we're gonna swap that way I can get a really good back-to-back -back comparison on basically the same weight of bike, same geometry bike. The only difference going downhill is the brakes. I'm in pedal, it says zero. A lot of leaves on the trail. So if these were gonna grab too hard to where I was gonna slide around, this would be, I mean, next to snow and ice, this would be kind of the ideal conditions. <laughs> Dry leaves or pine needles. And so far I'm feeling pretty good. A little slippage there. All right, let's test these brakes out. You can see all the leaves, brakes. <laughs> so yeah, you can lock up the brakes on these at any time you want, but I don't feel like you have to though. A little drop off there. So I do feel like the brakes probably still need a little more time to break in. All right, let's swap bikes and go back down. Try it again on the other one. I mean, the stock brakes are good. <laughs> Honestly, when it comes down to it, the 203 millimeter Tektro setup is not a bad brake setup. It works really well for these bikes. The one thing this ride can't do is see what's the longevity like. That's gonna take more time and testing to see long-term, are those rotors and pads gonna last longer, which I can't see any possible reason they wouldn't. We got back to the shop. I got to test both bikes side by side, and I think the verdict is, the stock brakes on the Warthog are just really good to begin with. Now, I was going on off-road trails, on-road downhills. I'll admit I've gone a lot faster than I did in this video, and that's something I'll have to test on another day. Are the Galfer 246 millimeter rotors with e-bike brake pads the biggest, baddest e-bike setup? The answer to that is, of course, yes. So if you want to do that, be aware that you're gonna need some special adapters. Now we are selling the Galfer brake adapters and this should be fairly easy to explain. I feel like brake adapters are one of those things that's really confusing. What size do I need? Which one fits my bike? But they make it really simple. For the Warthog bikes, we were running 203 millimeter rotors and we wanted to go up to 246. So that means we need a plus 43 millimeter adapter. 
we look on the back of their package, that's this guy right here. So it's really simple, all you do is add the difference between what you have and what rotor you wanna put on, and that's the adapter you buy. Let us know if you do buy a set of these and try them on your bike, because we are gonna to wanna to start making a list of what frames are they even compatible with. Now, if you wanna start a little bit simpler and say just upgrade your pads to the e-bike pads and not go crazy with the rotors just yet, here's a video I have on how to do just that.